left. Let's get another right to left this time. Coming high speed like over the water and we'll do some stuff from the copper to water going. Go up, go up. I would rather have it where you don't see this stuff if possible. Sure. The wind's from this way, so it'd be better if I came in and landed like this. One of the biggest problems we have flying around Los Angeles in helicopters is kites. The helicopter sequence. Yes. Does that make you nervous? You go too tight or you see the whole helicopter? Well, they painted it black and they want yellow stripes on it. The helicopter landing, they'll do from the condor. Looks pretty smooth once it starts moving. Have you guys ever been in there? I'm going to do it. He's going to come around right to left, Jeff. Guys are gonna get out. We've got two cameras covering up. It's gonna be like this. Toby's gonna be wide. Yeah, this is fun. We can tell them all. See, it's no fun being over here. You oh kids. man! The helicopter. The idea here is that since it's not a live show, it's almost like as if the band was rehearsing to go out on a tour. And so the helicopter is just a, a kind of a high-profile way of introducing the band and the clip. Okay, cut it. That was good. We just, you know, took the attitude, hey, we're going to show the world that you can sing about what you truly believe in, not what you feel you have to sing about to make money. If you don't have good music, if you're not a good band, I don't think people are going to buy your records, no matter what you sing about. We sing about the thing we like best, and uh, other bands sing about what they like best. I think just the words in general are what we're trying to get across to people. The video is more an energetic, happy type thing. On this clip, literally, if you count all the departments, there's well over 100 people working on it. The, the, what's unique about this clip, or what makes this clip different to all other clips, is scale. Look how big the stage is. Right. You know, it's huge. We couldn't, couldn't fit this in 90% of all the stages in L.A., and we have the biggest stages in the world. A normal rock and roll stage would be 60 by 40. So it's 100, it's not 119? Now, where we're shooting right now is, a, is an old NASA stage, an old stage that used to house the Spruce Goose. I mean, it's 30,000 square feet. It's, it is a, a huge space. Well, people don't realize that that kind of stage would, if it was in the forum, would, would be in the whole main floor of the forum. I mean, there'd be like no seats on the forum floor except the stage. This idea came to us and a very conceptual thing in terms of creating something that the band had a vision for. We've got this huge hundred dollar bill stage. It, it's the back of a hundred dollar bill stage with our album on it. It says, In God We Trust, the title of it. And it's just on this huge level. It's like the album cover, the stage setup. The idea was a stack of a hundred dollar bills that uh, with their name, logo, uh, sort of bursting forth. People walk around every day with money in their pocket and on that money it has the words in God we trust and he so he felt that that was kind of a symbol or of, of faith that people carried around unconsciously. I looked at it and I thought the striper logo fits best in it. The in God we trust which is on the hundred dollar bill has got to light up. The logo has got to burst through the middle and it's got to have lights from underneath that. And on top of that you've got to have the entire service painted like a genuine one hundred dollar bill. My first challenge was to find a company that could actually construct the sets and I came across Show Motion of course. Your stage is 150 feet long. The question is, is it going to be done in time? Oh, absolutely. Did Paul or Jeff call Lee Rose about the lighting for Striper? How late can you stay and help us tonight? Key grip on the Striper is uh, John Gilmore. We might be doing something special on Bob's Rooms tomorrow. Can you talk to Mark Drail from Schubert Sound? Well, once it's built, we just have to figure out what we're going to do once we're up there. He'll be spinning back and forth, playing one set this way and, and then the other one.
problem is, is this is a new kit that just came to me three days ago. Right. So, so I've never set up, so I can't tell you where to hang it until we have the kit sitting on stage. Okay. Every one of those symbols in chains have to be positioned from where he sits. We need to hang the monitors. We're going to fly the monitors for playback. So they figure they're going to get these lights up by about 8 o'clock. I just want to know where they're going to be generally so that they'll all hear the sound loud enough. And then, then right here you see the stakes for the first time. What can we do at the front row while you're doing that? Can they come down and do like a, like a chase flash or something? Make some of them red and some blue and see what happens. See how they are right now? While these other ones are doing that, can they just be lit up and spinning around like this? Now, on the I'm always there for you is where he wanted to see more movement. Right. What's the best color to show the dollar bill from above, just white? Paul Flattery is responsible for the producing of the clips and overseeing the whole production. Once you've decided on what you're going to do, the, 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 the basic role of the producer then is to hire the key department heads. And they're the people who you really are basically putting all your faith in. So that's the people who you have as your associate producer and production manager, your, you know, your, your art department, the lighting department, the grip department. The reason he brings in people like that that are strong underneath him is it gives him more of a, 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 more of a leeway to work with me on the creative end and say, you know, should we do this or should we do that or conceptually kind of think about things. And it's always good to have him to bounce ideas off of. Toby Phillips and Jeff Zimmerman who operate the cameras, they know from working with Jim a lot of times the kinds of shot he likes. Jerry Barons, who edits, knows the kind of way that Jim likes to edit these things. It's almost like they know, you know, what they do, when, and, and, and whose, whose turn it is to do what. Good afternoon, Enigma. Can I help you? One moment, please. Chelsea Comstock. Chris from Sweet Savage on 2. Chelsea, line 2, please. The rock world prior to Striper really wasn't used to uh, Christian music and heavy metal music being together. Since Striper's come about, there's a whole genre of metal now called white metal, which is bands that, that are hard rock and bands that uh, present more of a positive message. Well, their goal has always been to not be a Christian rock and roll band, but to be a rock and roll band composed of Christians. And I think that's the sound that you hear when you listen to their music. We pretty much lit for you to roam the whole front. Like if you had a home base, obviously it would be in the middle in the front. <laughs> 